Ten minutes before the hour, Tom Hartman here with you. And Kevin Camps, the radioactive waste bo- uh, waste w- watchdog at beyondnuclear.org, is on the line with us. Kevin, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much, Tom. Um, uh, the Japan, the Nuclear Regulatory Agency of the country of Japan today, I believe, or maybe it was yesterday, uh, raised the nuclear alert. You can tell us all what the language is, but they kicked this thing up from a one to a three. What's at Fukushima? What's the significance of this? What's going on? Yeah, the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is a agency of the United Nations. Ah, so, so suppose the- a nuclear safety regulator, but it's a nuclear power promoter by oh. mandate. Has this International Nuclear Event Scale (INES)? It's got seven stages on it, and this leak that just happened from these storage tanks at Fukushima Daiichi. Originally, the Japan Nuclear Regulation Authority was going to make it a one, which officially is a technically called an anomaly. Well, just in the last 24 hours, as you said, they're now talking a three, which is a serious incident, mm-hmm. and that's a hundredfold increase in severity, right. and uh, that is regarded as serious. And seven is the highest rung on this ladder, which is a global catastrophe, in my words. And only Chernobyl and Fukushima Daiichi have reached the seventh rung on this scale. But as a colleague, uh, John LaForge with NukeWatch in Wisconsin put it back at the time, two and a half years ago, well, there were three meltdowns and four explosions at Fukushima Daiichi. So isn't that at least a three times seven or a 21 on this scale? So this latest leak of 300 tons of highly radioactive water into the soil flowing now with the groundwater towards the ocean you know, they call it a three, but, you know, the ocean is just getting hammered at Fukushima. Is this a Dike. logarithmic scale, the way the Richter scale is? Yes, it is. Each rung on the ladder is ten times more serious. Wow. So going from one to two isn't doubling it. It's increasing it tenfold. And going from two to three is increasing it a hundredfold from the one or tenfold yeah. from the two. And the Nuclear Regulation Authority has admitted, you know, a hundredfold increase in the so seriousness. why has this not been called a seven? Well, you know, the seven might be if another earthquake hits the site, and they have something like 262 of these giant tanks, the same design, the same size as the one that just leaked. So let, leaked. let's just recap this. Uh, out of these 262 tanks, one of them just leaked. Just leaked, what, yesterday, last week? How big is yeah, the no, tank? Where is the tank? In the last day or two, they've admitted to this latest leak, and it's 300 tons of highly radioactive water. It's giving off a dose rate of 10 rem per hour, and the way they discovered the leak were puddles on the ground giving off 10 rem per hour. You could get a worker dose, which is a high thing, uh, within five hours, and you could get a fatal dose uh, just standing next to a five rem uh, puddle, you know, after a certain amount of time. Wow. And, and, a, and a rem, of course, is a thousand, I mean, there's a thousand, is it a thousand millirems or a million yes. millirems in a rem? A thousand, a thousand so- Thousand millirem make one rem, and workers and a million internationally micro-rems. are limited to two rem per year. Wow! Members of the public to a mere one hundred millirem per year under normal circumstances. So this thing is given off uh, five rem per hour. I think is the figure. So that's pretty much the level of radioactivity that the that the core material itself would have, isn't it? Sorry, I misspoke. Uh, 10 rem per hour from this puddle of water on the ground. No, if you get into the core material, I mean, you're talking just unimaginable dose rates. You're talking, uh, I don't even know if it's millions of rems per hour. Um, wow. But that's an instant. If you were to get close to the cores without radiation shielding, uh, you would be dead within a second. Wow. Wow. From gamma radiation. What is the. Uh so far, I mean, we've had a lot of workers, or Japan has had a lot of workers exposed to this. Uh, do, has anybody disclosed the consequences of this? Do we, do we know how many people have been directly affected by, by the Fukushima meltdown? Well, even the Japanese government now admits that 10,000 Fukushima Daiichi workers will qualify, really, for lifetime coverage, at least uh, health checkups and perhaps even compensation, because they've exposed themselves, they've been exposed to enough radiation dose to to be at risk of leukemia. And there's other categories, probably thousands of Fukushima Daiichi workers are going to qualify for it. But there have been probably 100,000 workers on that site, all exposed to varying levels of radioactivity. So again, they're going to make it difficult for workers to qualify for those benefits, unfortunately. What about the families who lived in this neighborhood when, when, the, when the plant went down and there was all that initial radiation that the government was pretending wasn't there? 
well, there's still 150,000 or more nuclear refugees scattered all over Japan, and they've left for other countries as well. And some of the startling, alarming news that's just coming out yet again is uh, childhood thyroid cancer, which is a very rare disease. In fact, uh, most years there are zero cases in 100,000 in Japan, and it looks like those numbers, at least in Fukushima Prefecture, are are increasing among you know children and uh, adolescents that were exposed to the radioactive iodine-131, which is a vicious poison that attacks the human thyroid gland. Right, right, and this is this is terrible. So, Kevin, um, what can they do? They've got these buildings that are that are tottering. They're on an earthquake fault zone. Uh, at the top of these, you know, five, ten-story buildings, they've got the these giant pools filled with radioactive material. Uh, rather than at ground level, and uh, I, I, it, it, what, what's next? Well, Tokyo Electric is admitting it's beyond their coping ability. Uh, they're asking for international assistance at long last. The Japanese government, just in the last couple of weeks, has said we're going to step in. This is under, you know, a, a pro-nuclear uh, prime minister Abe. Yeah. So finally, there's some recognition that this is just out of control. And you mentioned, why not a level seven? Well, if a big earthquake hits that site and hundreds of these containers were to let loose the hundreds of thousands of tons of highly radioactive water they contain, I, I think that might huh, certainly qualify as a level seven. How are they getting all these containers there? They're just all over Japan. They're building, you know, 100 ton water containers and shipping them to, to Fukushima to fill with water. Is that the deal? Yeah, those 262 giant tanks are actually, I think the figure is 1,000-ton uh, water tanks, and the one that leaked leaked 300 tons of its 1,000-ton capacity. But there's even smaller-sized, and you're talking now not 262, but many hundreds of these tanks spreading onto the hillsides. They're building them and trying to keep up with this flood. Amazing. Amazing. This is a, this is a disaster of unimaginable proportions, and it's a disaster that could happen at any one of over 100 nuclear power plants in the United States. And we, In fact, we have over 30 or over 50 nuke, nuke plants built in the same model as the Japanese. Which is it, Kevin? Ah, we've lost We Kevin. have 23 identical designs 23. and another eight that are very similar. Okay. Thank you. You're listening to Tom Hartman.